we will now have a look at the sweep line algorithm. We consider the same example as before. And we want to process all the segments from top to bottom. How does this look like for us? If we take some horizontal line that moves downwards, in the very beginning, before it hits any segment, it doesn't have to do anything. But then, as soon as it hits the first segment, we have to start to process something. And whenever it hits any other segment, we have to do something. And when we get to the end point of any segment, we also have to do something. So we get some event points. We get an event point for every segment, for the topmost point, and for the bottommost point. So we have to do something when the sweep line gets to the segment and when the sweep line leaves the segment. What are the active segments that we have to compare now? Of course, we only want to compare segments that are currently intersected by the sweep line. But it could be that all segments start at the same y-coordinate and they end at the same y-coordinate. In this case, all segments will always be active at the same time on our sweep line, so it doesn't help us. But maybe we don't have to look at all of them. So let's try to look at an example. How would a sweep line proceed here? We start at the very top and we move it downwards until it hits the very first segment. Now this is an active segment for us. We keep moving, we hit the next segment and now this is also active. So clearly we can compare these two segments and figure out if there is an intersection between them. In this case there is not, we proceed. Now we've hit the next segment and we have three active segments. Of course we can compare the segment with the other two and figure out if there is an intersection somewhere. But do we really have to find an intersection between this segment and this segment? Currently, this segment lies between both of them in the sweep line. So these two cannot intersect each other until at least we have the intersection between these two or we have an intersection between these two. One of them has to overtake the middle one before it can intersect the other one. So until that doesn't happen, we don't have to compare them at all. So when this segment enters, we only compare it to its neighbor. We keep moving, we get the next segment, we compare it with its neighbor, they don't intersect. We don't find this intersection right now, but this is okay because we will find it in the future. We keep moving, now we get to the end of this segment and we remove it from our sweep line. Now this segment does not lie between these two anymore, so we have to compare these two segments, we have to figure out if they intersect. Because now it is possible that at some point there will be an intersection between them. Keep moving, we remove the next one. And now again these two are neighbors on the sweep line. And we have to compare, we have to find an intersection point. And at this point we find this intersection point here. What do we do with this intersection point now? We now also add this intersection point as an additional event point. Because when we move on and we get here, the order of the segments on our speed line changes again. So it can be that we have some neighbor to the right of this segment. Currently we don't check if it intersects this segment here. But after they switch the order, we have to do this check. So whenever we get to an intersection point, we also have to stop and we have to do some more computation. We keep moving, we remove this edge, we add the next segment and we find this intersection point. We add the next segment, again we find this intersection point, but we already have it. We move to this intersection point, this also is the start of this new segment and we keep comparing we move downwards, we remove the last few segments, and we are done. We've completely processed all the segments and we found all the intersection points. Before we formalize this algorithm, there is one more thing that we should think about. What are the data structures that we require? There are basically two things. We have all these event points, 
We can compute most of them in the beginning, but we also have these intersection points that we have to insert into the data structure that contains all the event points. So we need some data structure where we can easily put in new points and where we can easily find the topmost point. And the second thing we need is we have to know in which order do we have the segments currently on the sweep line. So we have some segments and we want to order them from left to right by their intersection with the sweep line. So we need another data structure where we can save a bunch of segments ordered, where we can easily add new segments, where we can easily remove segments and where we can easily switch the order between two neighbors. Well, these are the two data structures that we need. The first for the event points and the second for the sweep line status. Before we decide on the data structure for the event point queue, we first have to define the order in which we want to pick the points. So if we have two points in our queue, then we want to pick the point P before Q, if and only if what conditions hold. Of course, we want to go from top to bottom, so if the y-coordinate of P is higher than the y-coordinate of Q, then P must come before Q. But it could also be that we have, for example, a segment that's completely horizontal, where P and Q have the same y-coordinate. It doesn't have to be a segment between them, it can also just be two different points somewhere. It might even be an intersection point and some input point. In that case, we have to define the order. We can choose what we do, but usually what you do is say, yeah, you just go from left to right if they have the same y-coordinate. So if the y-coordinate is the same and the x-coordinate of P is smaller than the x-coordinate of Q, then we also want to pick P before Q. Basically what that means is that our speed plan is not completely horizontal, but slightly tilted. And then it goes down this way and we again have a fixed order in which we want to process the vertices. And now we can decide which data structures do we use for the event point queue and which do we choose for the three plane status. And the answer for the event point queue is we just store it in a binary search tree. And we want to store it in a balanced binary search tree. And be the order that we store it is exactly this precedence order that we defined. So you take your favorite balanced binary search tree, it can be a red-black tree or AVL tree or 2-3 tree or whatever, you put all the points into and then at every step we can find the next event, we can delete events and we can insert new events in time logarithmic in the number of points that we have in the queue. What about the speed plan status? We want to look at the current sweep line and we want to know which segments are intersected and in which left to right order. How do we do that? We again use a balanced binary search tree and we put all the segments in it ordered by the intersection. And again we have the same running times as before. We can insert, we can remove segments in time logarithmic in the size of the sweep line status. And we can also easily just change the order between two segments in the balance binary search tree. So all the operations that we do here only take logarithmic time in the size of the data structures. And in the next part we want to look at how exactly the algorithm works and how we would implement it.